A legendary comeback saw the Dubs reverse a 23-point deficit over Dame's Blazers in 25 minutes. Fueled by a barrage from Jordan Poole, Klay Thompson, and Dante DiVincenzo, who combined for 60% of the team's offense equating to 73 points, you can't forget about the rising superstar Jonathan Kaminga, who would posterize three Portland defenders with his vicious springiness. Kaminga's growth has been somewhat stunted due to a lack of playing time, but in 22 minutes per night over his last 10, he's averaging 10 points on solid efficiency. The sophomore's three-point stroke and generally his belief in himself still need to find the proper consistency, but under the media microscope that being on the four-time champions comes along with, this still just 20-year-old up-and-comer is doing a solid job of playing within his role. We saw how that aforementioned microscope affected James Wiseman, who's found himself in the Motor City up in Detroit. Steph would give his reaction to Kaminga's performance by both tweeting out and Instagramming a picture of John's poster next to a Kevin Hart meme. Follow your boy DFlow on Insta and Twitter, by the way, at DFlow Hoops. But meanwhile, for Clay Thompson, attempting to follow up a showing where he had 12 threes, Portland's defensive scouting made it seem like this would be an off night for the all time sniper and the dubs. He and JP would combine to make just six of their 22 field goals in the opening half. But inspirational Clay and overhated Jordan would respond to that game planning in the final 24 minutes, draining daggers down the stretch like everything depended on it. And with the Warriors positioning in the West standings right now, it really does all depend on just one game. Merely a few wins or losses can take you from 4th place to 13th in the Wild Wild West. Stay tuned to see an unnecessary disrespectful take from Bill Simmons about Play Thompson, which was insane. From an on-court standpoint, also stay tuned for the play sets which have led Clay to find a lethal rhythm lately, and for much more on the reigning champions, whose chances at going back to back may be more realistic than we think. Right quick, just 13.7% of you watching are subscribed, so please subscribe, and to also help this video spread, please leave a thumbs up. There's been a target directly on the back of the Golden State Warriors ever since winning their fourth championship in eight years last June. That's led to a massive championship hangover that's ranged from not just the coaching staff and players, but through to the front office. Let's be real, this team is lucky to be fifth in the Western Conference with how soft their defense has looked for a large portion of the year, and with how many injuries they've dealt with and continue to deal with. Draymond's wrist injury is just another one of many setbacks this Warriors personnel, coaching staff, and fan base have had to suffer through. Franchise player Stephen Curry has missed 24 games and counting, including the last nine. Steph's dealt with a ton of frustrating setbacks, including an elbow injury, an ankle injury, a shoulder injury, a hip injury, and most recently, he suffered a knee injury. Tough luck for the reigning finals MVP as we're all praying for him to get and stay healthy. There's been problems up in the front office with Bob Myers as well. Bringing in Anthony Lamb and Ty Jerome on two-way contracts is going to see those two reach a max amount of games played quite soon. Considering those two have become crucial rotation pieces, you don't want to lose them at this point. Ty Jerome has been very decent, and I have nothing against the guy, but I've always said since the summer that Mac McClung, the recent dunk contest champion, deserved a roster spot. Patrick Baldwin Jr. is another player I've been really high on since day one, but PBJ hasn't received nearly enough playing time behind Anthony Lamb. There's still a ton of overall questions for Golden State regarding the strength of their bench and overall continuity, but at the end of the day, Playoff experience means everything, and the Dubs have double slash triple of that than almost any other playoff team outside of maybe Milwaukee, Boston, and you could say Phoenix, outside of those three, two of which aren't even in their conference, give the experience advantage to the Dubs at all times. We'll get to more on why championship number five in nine years doesn't seem like the most impossible thing. But the main free agent pickup who was hyped up endlessly on this channel last summer in the three-point marksman and glue guy off the bench in Dante DiVincenzo has fully lived up to my expectations, so it's not like the depth is too much of a concern. Draymond Green told reporters after the Portland win that DiVincenzo has quote been a mainstay, an X-factor, I can think of a million words, end quote. 
Green wasn't the only one who gave heavy praise to Dante, as Kerr spoke on DiVincenzo yesterday, saying, quote, he's just having a spectacular season, it's been a perfect spot for him and a perfect fit for us, end quote. And shout out to one of the voices of the Warriors in at OnBallSteph on Twitter for inspiring the Warriors to tweet out the We Got DiVincenzo meme. According to Warriors Muse, Dante is one of six players with 40 plus threes made in February, and he's making 50% of them 5% higher than anyone else who's doing that. Let's move on to Thompson's historic 12 three-pointer game. This guard-to-guard -guard dribble handoff sees him pull up like Chef off the bounce. A well-spaced out split action sees the under-trusted Moses Moody also set a great screen for Clay like DiVincenzo. This time it's of course off the ball with Jermichael Green dishing from the post. Flat isolation on the next bucket. He's gonna go triple hezzy dribble into a cross to his offhand and fake the step back before repeating that combo instead with one hezzy to start and then stepping back. After pouring in a vicious nine more of those three pointers in that game, Clay didn't receive the respect I've been accustomed to granting him. Bill Simmons took a shot at both him and maybe backhandedly your boy D Flo for paying respect to Clay after all the shit he's been through over the past few years. Here was Simmons on why he thinks Thompson is gassed up. This Clay Thompson thing where I feel like it's becoming over-covered and over-discussed. Every time he does well, we have to do the, oh, somebody thinks he's not done yet. And we, the announcers have to get into it. And Clay's got to talk to people. It's like, dude, we've been doing this all year. We're good. Clay Thompson, you're good. We're all fine. We've all agreed. You're good at basketball again. Do we have to do, we have to do this whole circus? Like, you're good. You have four rings. You're, you're one of the best shooting guards of this century. We're good. We're not arguing about this. Nobody's doubting you anymore. You're not like Ozzy washed up. Like, we all think you're good at basketball. So I, I vote that we stop this, Jacobs. I think that's fair. And I think with Clay, we're like, he's back now. He, look, look at Clay Thompson. Now he's back. It's been like, I don't know, a year? Right. Like Kevin, Kevin Durant tears his Achilles. sits out for two years and then just like laces up and scores 40. And we don't even bat an eyelash. You know what I mean? But like Clay Thompson worked himself back over eight months and now we celebrate him like, you know, like uh, like he, he he just, you know, scored 45 points out coming out of the hospital. Yeah. His January splits house, 27 points a game, 43% from three. His February splits, nine games, not counting tonight, 25 points and 45.9% from three. Eight, for the season, he's 41% from three again. He's averaging 22 a game. This is like a typical Clay Thompson season. Let's put a fork in the narrative. Clay Thompson's back. We're good. He's we back. all agree. Let's, he's back. let's just move on. He's back. And guess right. what? When Curry comes back, you're not you're not breaking new ground if you're like, I think this is one of the best backcourts of all time. We've heard that one too. The Warriors are the most overcovered, over discussed, over talked about teams probably in any sport that we've ever had. We know all the angles. We don't have to keep saying it. Clay's a great shooter, he's good, he's back. Took a while, got him back. We get it. Regarding that disrespect, it's obvious to see why that was such an unnecessary grilling right there given Thompson has bounced back from consecutive major lower body surgeries and done what likely no man could ever do, get back to the prime version of himself. Gotta love how Simmons didn't even briefly mention any of that. Only other thing I'm gonna say regarding this situation is this. Clay as a number one option right here picking up the slack for Steph. If Curry can come back like he did from his injury last year, Thompson is an utterly dangerous second option with the flow he's gained over the last little bit. But here's why things are lining up for the dubs to potentially repeat. First of all, Andrew Wiggins, we're praying for you and are worried about your whereabouts, but take your time to get back. In addition to both Wiggs and Steph being back shortly, Gary Payton II, who I have a separate video on coming up, is going to be returning as well, given the Warriors dealt James Wiseman for him but not even in terms of the Warriors, but in terms of the NBA landscape as a whole, that's why the Dubs have the best shot at repeating. I mean, just think about the Western Conference. The new look Clippers and Suns have less than 20 games left to find continuity as a group before the playoffs. A lot of them on those teams have never played with one another for a significant chunk of time. 
The Denver Nuggets seem like the biggest threat, given they have Porter Jr. and Murray healthy this year. But don't forget who took them out in a gentleman's sweep in round one last spring. That'd be the Dubs. Just north of the Bay Area, the Sacramento Kings have been this year's Cinderella story, but have the least amount of playoff experience, likely out of any playoff team. The West doesn't seem as overwhelming as people make it out to be. However, Milwaukee, over in the Eastern Conference, if they get to the finals themselves, they may just be an impossibility for Golden State to beat four times out of seven based on matchups. It's just not the greatest matchup for Golden State there, so they may have to pray someone else takes out Milwaukee before them. While they're on the verge of gaining home court advantage, even if the Dubs have to start the playoffs on the road, the postseason is when their greatest ever big three of Stephen Curry, Draymond Green, and Klay Thompson comes to life. That's when those three turn their spirit, motor, and desperateness to a whole different stratosphere. Don't count the dubs out quite yet. If just a few things turn around here, primarily this team's bad habits defensively, then it could again be a very special spring on Warriors ground. But will the dubs repeat in your opinion? Next video, I'll give a shout out from my last upload and this one, peace.